one of the things that I've been really concerned by is that there seems to be a real rebirth and renewal of the platforming of trans exclusionary radical feminists. And I feel that while we have been quite effectively demolishing their arguments about how trans women aren't women and how trans women present a danger to cisgender women everywhere, and I think that there's been a lot of really great and useful work done demolishing it, there's not been that much time spent on thinking about how and why um, this kind of revived platforming of these figures like Jermaine Greer or Julie Bindle is happening. Because and this was big over the weekend, right? And this was really big it over the weekend. It was all over the papers. Because you had um, Janice Turner's uh, heinous article saying children sacrificed to appease the trans lobby, which is just classic scaremongering. Front page of the sun as well, no? Yep, front page of the sun uh, today, which was uh, the, the skirt on the drag queen goes swish, swish, swish. Terrible scanning. Doesn't even go that well with wheels on the bus, but I digress. And I think that we can see a lot of parallels between this kind of a uh, confected moral panic about you know trans people corrupting our children and taking over our schools we can see a lot of parallels with the kind of section 28 hysteria of the 1980s right we can see a lot of parallels with a um kind of homophobic authoritarian populism which came to power i think with thatcher and i think because we can see those parallels weirdly this should give us a little bit of hope because that was a really effective political strategy when it was able to present itself as a counter hegemony. So the Thatcherite narrative went that I'm going to come and make schools teach common sense curriculum values again, like, you know, the three R's and no more hippie teachers promoting homosexuality. And people were able to look at it and go, yeah, that sounds about right. Whereas actually, that kind of orthodoxy is no longer a counter-hegemony. It's just hegemony. And what's more, that is completely at odds with the general movement of pop culture. Now, I'm not saying that life is not made often intensely unbearable for in particular trans youth and trans people of colour in this country. Almost half of all trans youth in this country have attempted suicide. 84% have self-harmed, and those are deeply alarming statistics. However, the Kardashians are trans-inclusive now. Kanye West is trans-inclusive now. Pop culture is going in one direction, and it is in a more inclusive, empathetic, and accepting one. And that's not the mood of our popular press. So that should lead us on to our second question, which is how can these figures, like Julie Bindel, like, uh, what's her name? Burchill, right, like Jermaine Greer, how can they find friends in the right-wing tabloid press? Because, let's be real, these were the feminists who were getting smeared as lesbian separatists, as bad mothers and all the rest of it, in these very rags not that long ago. And I was giving it some thought, and I was thinking about the fact that trans-exclusionary radical feminists aren't radical at all. Because what they've done is they've looked at the foundational feminist premise, which is that Gender is a set of social norms constructed to dominate women as a class and that women's emancipation is based on the deconstruction and the dismantling of these norms and gone, well, we can't take that too far. We will at some point rely on a bi biological essentialism. And what they've done is essentially respond to the death of modernity and the kind of utopian potentials of, you know, modernist meta-narratives and kind of accept the conditions of post-modernity, that real change isn't really possible and it's not desirable, which is the exact position of these right-wing tabloid rags. They don't want change. They don't want political participation. The reason why you're able to see this kind of dovetailing of ideologically divergent political interests is because they both want the same thing, which is stasis. So when people say that identity politics are splitting the left and it's going to interrupt a program of social and economic transformation, I kind of present this counterpoint, which is no, these things are deeply connected. Trans rights are human rights. They mm. are our rights. They are political rights. And us as cis people need to ride or die for mm. our trans siblings. And I think we need to get a lot better at rejecting the framing of mainstream debate and push it onto politically useful territory.